Hi everybody! Welcome to another episode of Time Out with Tackle What's Next. I am your host, Danielle Berman, and we are talking to athletes and executives about how sports has changed the course of their lives and the lessons they've learned in life outside of the game. Thanks for taking a time out with us tonight. I'm so excited to bring Jasmine Highsmith to Time Out. Jasmine started her career on the high school track team. She's an accomplished shot put and discus thrower, as well as a decorated track and field athlete. She went on to play Division One or run, run Division One track and field, excuse me, with my good friend Savania DeBarros at the University of South Florida before graduating with her BA in interdisciplinary social science. She went to St. Leo University to get her MBA in sports management as well as her doctorate of education in sports management, and she currently works in collegiate athletics at Houston Baptist University. And Jasmine is a founder of Female Athletes Rock, which aims to celebrate female athletic ability and accomplishment rather than appearances and what an athlete looks like. So I'm so excited to have Jasmine here. I'm gonna bring her on screen and we'll go ahead and get started with tonight's conversation. Hello, hello, how's it going Hi, Jasmine? how are you? Doing well, how's everything? Everything's going good. I'm actually still at work finishing up some stuff today, but perfect time and no one's coming in and out of my office so this is perfect <laughs> oh well we're so excited to have you and, yes. and thanks for being here tell us a little bit about what you've been up to i know you're working at houston baptist um tell us a little bit about what's been going on with you what's been going on with yes. female athletes rock just catch us up with the last few months yes absolutely so um in june i transitioned from my longtime hr career into a career in collegiate athletics it's been a goal of mine for a very long time to get into collegiate athletics. So when the opportunity came, I jumped at it. So I'm here at Houston Baptist University. Here, we're here in Houston, um, very in the, the heart of Houston, actually. We're Division One. we're in the Southland Conference. Um, small private school, but great atmosphere to be in, um, great staff to work with, great students, and I'm actually enjoying what I do. Oh, that's good. That's yeah. what matters most, right? That <laughs> yes. you're loving it and you're having a great time. Um, I want to talk about you and your athletic experience as well. So we talked about your track and field experience, but tell us a little bit about your first sports experience in general. Like what was the first thing you remember doing mm -hmm. and how'd you get to track? How'd you find it? Yeah, so um, funny story. I never, ever played like an organized sport um, outside <sighs> of doing you know, things at school and stuff like that. Um, I did cheer for a little while. That is a sport, considered a sport, but oh, yeah. Pop Warner, Little League cheer, it's not as intense as, you know, competitive cheer. Right. Um, but I I danced for a very long time. And so okay. I got to high school, I, I shot up, I was five feet, 10 inches tall, and all of the coaches were like, you need to do something. And my track and field coach, she was actually the first person to kind of like pull me out the hallway and said, hey, you know what? I am going to make you join my team. And I was like, mm, no, not really. That's not what I want to do. I don't want to play sports. I kind of want to focus on school. And then the rest is history. I joined the track team, and I turned out to be pretty good at it in the shot put in the discus. And I didn't know, I didn't even know what a shot put in the discus was when she <laughs> asked me to do it. So I learned how to do that in the ninth grade, and it pretty much took me from there took me into college and it's been a great ride since. I love it. I <laughs> love it. I think it's always so funny that, you know, it's it's not usually the first sport you play that you end up right. sticking with, right? You right. know, whether it's dance or cheer or a different sport mm -hmm. that you play for a while, then you kind of find your way. So that's yeah. awesome. Glad that your, your track Thank coach you. in high school was like, <laughs> you got it. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, yeah. Well, tell us a little bit about what playing sports or cheer or dance but track specifically as well like what impact has it made on your life does do you feel like it's changed who you are today oh wow i i always think back i don't know what i would be without the sport honestly and it's just the the everything that the sport embodies and it teaches us so like the leadership skills the confidence um the ability to believe in myself that was the the first time i kind of like okay, you know what, you can do this, let's do this. Or I remember my goal was to become a Division One athlete. And yeah. the goal, it, I, I watched my hard work come true. So the sport has done tremendous 
amount of things for me. Most importantly, it set me up for life. Um, I know how to push through, persevere, and kind of make the best of any situation, you know, and, um, and bounce back from any situ situation as well. Yeah, absolutely. I think those are great points. And sport is kind of a metaphor for life, right? You kind of learn those life skills. And, and absolutely. It's, it's, you know, one of those best pre preparation experiences mm -hmm. for like high pressure situations yes. and failure <laughs> and all of those things in a safer, yeah. hopefully environment, right than than reality. Yeah. Uh, but you talked a little bit about some of the skills that sports taught you. Can you tell us a little bit about what inspired you to create Female Athletes Rock? And was that from your experience as an athlete yourself? Mm -hmm. Like, tell us a little bit about that. Absolutely. So um, Female Athletes Rock was an idea um, in 2013. Um, after talking with some friends, my friend, I, I, of course, other athletes always attract other athletes. I had a group of friends. They're athletes, and they were asked to play in, like, a celebrity basketball game. And um, she just so happened to mention, you know, I had to bring my own shorts because the shorts they gave me, I didn't want to play in those. So I was like, well, what kind of shorts did they give me? She was like, they gave me spandex. And I was oh, like, nobody no. plays basketball in spandex. So from there, the, we, we were talking about it. And at the time, I was also coaching um, high school track and field. And so I, I ran into young female athletes who they didn't have anything at the time. This social media was there but it wasn't all the, like it wasn't what it was today in 2013 mm -hmm. so they didn't have really positive images to look at of other athletes if they didn't know who the athlete was you know there was there was nothing else you know we see the same athletes on tv all the time so female athletes rock was a way for me to give other female athletes not just you know, the ones we that we see all the time that we love but other female athletes a platform to tell their story yeah i love that and i think it's I think it's important because we don't really recognize the issues mm -hmm. until you see something like that, right? Or it right. happens personally to you or like your friend. Right. And then you're like, well, wait a minute. Now there's yeah. all these things that are popping up that I'm like, yeah, that's uh -huh. not right. And that's not yeah. right. Yeah. 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 So, and I love that you focused on like the images you see because mm -hmm. it is not necessarily have anything to do really with the talent you have or the sport that you're playing, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of times we see women that look a certain way getting attention versus mm -hmm the talent that they have. And like you yeah. said, I think that's changed a lot since, yes, since then. Yes, it has a lot. And but we still have work to yeah, do, right? <laughs> yeah, we still have work to do, but representation is, is definitely key. I can remember when I started track and field, I didn't know of any, like, I didn't know any throwers. They didn't highlight throwers, but now we see Raven Saunders on TV. We see Michelle Carter. And, you know, that's like, oh, I, I can throw. I don't have to, you know, so representation definitely matters. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about what Female Athletes Rock actually does. Like what kind of programs mm -hmm. or initiatives do you guys do? Right. Um, how do you actually spread that message? Right. So the goal for Female Athletes Rock is to empower and inspire. And in doing so, um, sharing other athletes' stories. So whether that be through a feature, sharing their story about how, you know, they came to sport, what the sport has done for them. Um, also, it's representation, again, just giving – an avenue to those female athletes that don't get the recognition they deserve. Um, in addition to that, this year, earlier this year, I focused a little bit on the transition of female athletes out of the sport because for so for our transition, like most people, it gets swept under the rug. And it's because it's all oh, female athletes, they got it. They understand it. They know what to do. And though we make the grades and we might have the we might have everything down packed, that transition for us is the same across the board. Most female athletes they leave the sport and they're kind of like stuck mm. and don't know what quite to do next or where to go. And and so my goal with um, featuring female athletes and having that discussion life after sports was pretty much to prepare other athletes, younger athletes for that transition phase and listen to some great women talk about what it was like for them to transition from the sport and into um, their career or whatever they chose to do after the sport. Yeah, I, I think that's really important. And you brought up a great point about how clearly the female athlete experience is different from the male uh -huh. athlete experience when it comes to transition, because mm -hmm. one, it's, it's almost, expected right? right that you should know like you shouldn't be prepared to play sports mm -hmm. your whole life or make a living off of sport which is a whole right. issue in itself right um but to your point it doesn't make it any easier to say goodbye to a career you've built for 20 plus years right just because you're 
you know, no, there's not a professional opportunity versus right. you didn't make it, right? I think right. that there's still that identity crisis and that yes, mental health absolutely. for you, right? Yeah. You have that mindset. So I appreciate you highlighting that because I do yeah. think a lot of people, you know, just don't know enough about the situation and go, oh, well, what were they expecting? <laughs> they played, you know, women's golf or women's hockey, right? I right. think today all of those things are changing and we're seeing professional opportunities, but that right. attitude stays the same of like, well, what are they expecting? You can't make right. a living off of that. You're, you're, it's women's sports, but that whole <laughs> mantra is changing. Um, yeah. At the same time, we still need to support those that weren't able to make an opportunity. Right. So I appreciate you highlighting that that Thank difference because it matters, right? It makes a it big difference. It definitely does matter. You want you probably wouldn't even realize the impact that sport has on some people and how we make that our identity. For many mm -hmm. of us, that's all we know. That's all we eat, breathe, and slept for a number of years. For me, it was only eight years because I did it in high school and college. But for some of my uh, my peers. They were playing sports for years since they were the age of six. And so that when it ended, they knew nothing else. Yeah, so, yeah. definitely. Absolutely. Well, I, I think that's really great tie into my next point, mm -hmm. which is the work that you're doing now at, at Houston Baptist, um, the speaking and the sharing of stories you do through Female mm -hmm. Athletes Rock. Why, why is it so important to share these stories of whether it's life after sports or just representation? Right. Um, why are these things so important to share? How do they really impact athletes it, now? It's impactful because I think sometimes we need to hear it from other people. Um, in many cases, you know, your mom may tell you something and it's going one ear and out the other, <laughs> or your dad or your cousin. But if you hear it from somebody else and if you see someone that you can relate to, then the information comes across a lot easier. You're like, oh, somebody might have a breakthrough in that moment or somebody might just see themselves in another person and feel like, you know what, I can do this as well. So that's why I think it's important to share those stories. And in my position here at HBU, um, I've really been, I've only been here four months and I'm been trying to connect with the athletes and stuff like that. So far, so good. But again, it's me reminding like, hey, I've done this before. I've been there before. I can help you versus, mm -hmm. you know, someone that has never, ever done this in this position. They don't really understand what it has been like to be a division one student athlete. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which makes a difference. Right. I think it's that peer, that peer yeah. situation where you can learn from someone that's right. been there and also those that have kind of the similar experience, but it's, it's that same thing, like your parents <laughs> saying something versus your cool cousin saying something. Yeah. You're like, oh, well, I'm going to listen to them. They know yeah. what they're talking about, yeah. right? So it's absolutely that kind of relationship. So I love that. So tell us a little bit about what you did to set yourself up for success after graduating, after yeah. leaving track and field. Is there things that you felt like you did that helped you? Mm -hmm. Are there things that you wish maybe you would have done mm -hmm. or taken advantage of? Tell us a little bit more about your transition. Right. So my story is a little bit different. So I always, my, my biggest thing is, hey, take advantage of your resources. I feel like I did not do enough to take advantage of my resources while in college. Um, and that's just because, you know, as an athlete, you're in a bubble. You, you stay with the athletes. You stay at your athletic center. So everything's wrapped up in that bubble. And I didn't really get a chance to network and explore like I feel like, like I should have as a traditional student may have. So um, however, there was that drive in me to always continue and keep when I had goals. I knew I wanted to work in sports, didn't know quite where, and I jumped around a lot. Oh, I want to do, I want to do professional sports. I want to do marketing. I want to do this. But I realized that the impact was going to come in collegiate sports for me. Um, I would, I would be able to be a lot more impactful. Um, and I'd also be able to mentor other student athletes as they transition out of the sport. And so I always tell my athletes, hey, you know, make sure you're networking, make sure you're working on your resume, regardless of if you've had a job before, you know, use those transitional skills that you've learned in your sport to shine on your resume. So there's a lot of those things that's coming in with my HR background that I'm preaching to them now. So it's that that part, I I do believe is kind of set me up for success post sports. Yeah, I, I think it's great too that you have an HR background mm -hmm. and can kind of bring those two worlds together. Um, yes. And I don't know what you think kind of being in the space, but mm -hmm. athletes really have a lot of skill sets that companies look for in mm -hmm. employees. Yes. Um, 
And it's not necessarily about the actual job description of here's the tasks we want you to do or the right. systems we want you to learn, but it's more like I can teach you how to learn our systems or how right. to read this project or how to put this proposal Absolutely. together. Yes. But I can't teach you like persistence <laughs> and the I dedication and teamwork. Right. Exactly. Right. So exactly. A lot of a lot of athletes take that for granted. And I'm like, no, you have to use that to the best of your ability. Of course, you weren't given the opportunity like a traditional student to follow up with an internship or if you did, you didn't get enough time on it. However, you still need to use those experiences. And also, get in, when they ask you to volunteer doing different things on campus, make sure you do it. Make sure you're showing up on your campus so people know who you are, so you can leverage your network post-sports. Yeah, so important, so important. And I, I also know that through Female Athletes Rock, you're, you're making an impact. You're not, you're not only just teaching folks how to go use their right. leverage to get a job, but you're also highlighting representation and mm -hmm. the power of female athletes and how, you know, how successful they can be and how yes. they can in turn impact other yes. people. Uh, so tell us what you would tell an athlete that comes to you and says, I want to do something good. I want to mm -hmm. make an impact mm -hmm. and feel empowered to make the difference. Like where, right. where should they start? How do they figure that out? I think it's, it's passion. Um, passion is going to lead your purpose and purpose is pretty much what, what you will wake up and do for free. And so if um, I know uh, I've had people, oh, you should charge this, you should do this. And I'm like, no, that's not what I want to do because it's not, to me, it's not about the money. It's more so about, you know, the impact and who you can touch. If I can reach one, that's fine with me. And so um, if I just, just look into what it is that you love to do, what it is you have a heart for, and what it is you would wake up every day and do for the rest of your life and follow that. Mm, that is great, great Thank advice. You. I love that. Thank <laughs> you. Well, I want to highlight as we're starting to wrap up here, mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about what's coming up from Female Athletes Rock. Are there any kind of features or projects right. you guys are diving into that you want to highlight here and yes. let our folks know where to find them? Absolutely. So I took a break. Um, I'm in the middle of some wedding planning. I have a wedding Ooh, coming up in nice, December. Nice. Uh, so, but other than that, um, I'm going to start revamping the website and getting some stuff done. But me and one of my friends, who's actually a former female athlete turned yoga instructor, we are going to hold a sports bra, bra drive um, this November in December. And basically, it's creating resources, um, providing a resource to athletes, to female athletes who may not have the resources to purchase, you know, a good bra, a good sports bra. And we didn't, re I didn't realize how good sports bra, how impactful a good sports bra is for young female athletes. And as they're going through those changes about their body, you want them to feel confident. So we're going to be doing a sports bra drive, and that information will be out very soon. And we basically have an Amazon link. And people can go on the link and order what we have set up. And then we're going to have a sport. We're going to have an event to pass out the sports bras in December. Oh, that's awesome. Yes. Well, definitely send us that link because we want to share. Will. We want to participate. And I definitely will. Yeah. And we, I totally appreciate that because, yeah, it's, it's, it doesn't seem like a big thing when you just mm -hmm. kind of say, oh, a sports bra, but that can make or break someone showing up to practice, right? If yes. they don't feel comfortable yes. um, competing or, or right. being physical. So it's, it is, it is a big deal. Yes. And it's awesome that you're doing that. Thank and you. yeah, of course. <laughs> and as we, as we finish up here, mm -hmm. what is the, what's coming up besides the sports bra drive? Where can people find you? Where yes. can people find Female Athletes Rock? And yes. so, uh, let us know. Yeah, so Instagram at Female Athletes Rock. And then we're on the web, femaleathletesrock.org. Like us on Facebook. I Twitter sometimes, but not as much as I should. It's just so hard sometimes running all of the places. It's too much. <laughs> There's a lot. And so um, very soon, and soon we'll start, we'll start gearing up again um, for our features and our spotlights and stuff like that. Awesome. Well, yes. any parting words around how athletes can take advantage of that kind of career transition that you want to share before we sign off? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So career, just like a transition out of sports, career transitions are not easy um, because there's always that feeling of, oh my God, I have to start all over. But I do believe that there is power 
and starting over. And if you have the, you can start over as many times as you want to. Um, and so in doing so, just, just believe in yourself and, you know, put away the imposter syndrome, put, do away with all of the negative thoughts, you know, speak, speak nicely to yourself and just give yourself a shot. Don't talk yourself out of the race before you even start the race. Well, that I'm so glad I asked because that was a perfect, <laughs> perfect piece of advice thank to end you. it on. So thank Jasmine, you. thank you so much for being here. Thanks for taking the time out with thank us. Thank you. No problem. Thank you, Danielle. I enjoyed you. Thank you so much for thinking of me too. Of course. And definitely we will we will send our folks around the, the sports bra drive link when yes. you get it to us once you have it together. Yes. Good luck with the wedding planning and thanks thank for tuning you. in. Thank you. Bye. Thanks everyone. Bye.